Hi, so today this will be probably a little bit unexpected, but I wanted to show you some of my machines to make pasta. I will also need this one, so I will preheat it. So I will go through the whole process and I will explain some stuff throughout the thing. So this is basically a mixer, this is a roller and this is a cutter. Now this mixer is not too great because I had to make a pulley system and make a reduction of this thing and it's a little bit loud. I planned to enclose this whole thing but I was like man. It's not too loud, but it is loud still, I mean, it's just I hate the sound of universal motors that we in EU use very often. Okay, so I started with preparing it all, and now I can explain, I guess, why even, like, seriously. So, I eat a lot of pasta, right? So. Well, there is only one company in the whole Republic that sells uh, good pasta. And this one company, or this pasta from this one company, fuck, is sold in only two shops of relatively large cities, and the stock is very limited. So I was like, okay, well, this is dangerous. I need a good pasta. Anyway, so the reasoning behind the relatively big mixer or DIY mixer was that I was thinking that okay well I will probably make a huge amount of like dough but not really so I would probably buy a commercially available machine or maybe the reduction it's not too great I would probably buy some reduction module for the asynchronous motor and make it that way but anyway now, I will try to add precise amount of flour. Oh fuck, I forgot to zero the scale. Which should be about 290 grams. There was 154, so that will be... Fuck, 3, 4, 4, 4. Oops. Just like that. So yeah, uh, you can make a large batch probably, but I found that if you let the dough sit for some time, it will change consistency quite a lot. It's not better or worse really, um, it's probably even better, so you can probably try to make large batches. Another thing is that the mixer is not very good for like making the dough from beginning. So if you like pouring ingredients, you have to use a little bit of manual labor, which is not too great, but not terrible. I just make sure that all everything is mixed up relatively well and. Yeah, this is basically a good starting point. And the reason is that I am using like this thing that I made and the geometry is not very good and definitely not good for this type of dough. I used it mainly for making bread but then I realized that you don't really need such a mixer for making bread because it's good if you don't mix dough for bread too well. But this is not about bread, right? Anyway, also the method of attaching this thing is relatively primitive. I basically have to put this into this uh, aluminium tube, which is a hole. And you may see it or not. I will try to do it this way so you can see it. And then just put in screw in here. Screw in here. If that is Yeah, so this is not too great, but anyway, this does save a lot of manual labor, still. And just, I help 
be going a bit with this wooden stick. But eventually it will do it anyway. The goal here is to have this dough relatively inconsistent color. So I just disassemble this quickly and I can start. In past I was able to like make a ball, like one consistent ball of dough, but still I think I was using lot less flour to the egg and you have to get the ratios perfect basically because if you don't then you will have to add like milliliter amounts of water and see how it how it mixes because either way you may end up with dough that you can like roll or it won't be you won't you won't be able to make a ball ball from it. So I will form it really quickly just so it doesn't have too much cracks I guess or voids. Yeah this is good enough. And I make a cylinder with about 45 millimeter diameter Add a little bit of flour. I basically try to be consistent for the roller machine because it is a good idea to be consistent. Okay, that's about enough. Okay, before I go on to next step, which is rolling, I will explain you this machine how it works basically so this has two rollers these are not machined or in any way these have just wooden insert with a hole there is this tube it doesn't have even bearing but it's wood it doesn't really need bearing that much this one does have bearing and this one doesn't have just because of space I can really fit it in here I could from the outside but yeah, I could fit bearing from the outside. Anyway, I wasn't really know. I didn't really know what I was doing when I constructed this, and it has iterated quite a lot, basically. So, so this machine has a uh, U profiles on the sides, and there is a wooden block with bearing and a roller that is riding up and down there on the both sides, and there is a handle which is attached to threaded rod, which is screwed into this wooden block, which is has 245 degree angled grooves on which there are some ball bearings and this is attached to this part and this is connected to this like to the assembly with the uh, the roller basically so if I crank this this will change height and this bearings will ride on this 45 degree surfaces and I mean it's uh, Maybe not the best way how to do this. I mean, it's pretty good actually. You can basically align the tilt of this roller and even though this is not perfectly machined, so it's like it will contact this upper roller at various points during the rolling, so it's whatever I guess. But anyway, this is pretty much the easiest thing I was able to think of. Previously I used a machine that has this roll adjustable and there was two set screws and you adjusted these to set the height but the travel was very limited basically and I was able to make hole from like 0 0.5 centimeters to 0 and here I can fit my whole hand through this groove so I can basically grab this thing I don't have to process it in any way just push it there and start rolling now this makes sound and it shouldn't make and that is because there is a block of wood which is supposed to scrape or prevent the dough to stick to this roller and go through the other side and there is basically a hole and 
a shoot and this shoot is not necessary but it serves well it should serve purpose to spread the flower on the dough around which it doesn't really do this thing same thing apart from the spreading of flower it uh, it provides some uh, way of centering the dough on these rollers so they, do they don't travel. But since I don't adjust these bearings very well, the they it does travel. But otherwise this works well. Anyway, enough talking. I guess this is pretty much... Oh yeah, maybe. The legs. It This thing needs to be very close to the edge and I will explain why. Because the dough will go through here and anyway the thing is that these legs are not very great it is quite unstable machine so that is one thing that I don't like and yeah motor this is like motor they had around some timing belt there is no teeth on this pulley just for reducing speed and there is a switch it works and there is a power supply this is 5 volts this is 12 volt motor but just to reduce speed this is 5 volts PSU not very isolated from the elements I must say so let's start the party So in the first stage I basically just roll this dough by hand and I don't let it go down because I don't really need that. It's faster this way for me. It's just really just because of how quick this is and how convenient. So I have to flower it very quickly. Doesn't need to be too excessive but doesn't really matter. Okay. Okay. Now we are at the point where there's already the flower that we used to like lubricate this is already gone, so I will stop here and I will make a loop. Well, I will try to make it in such a way that uh, we will end up with the same thickness of the dough as we basically started with. Which I don't think will be very successful at that, but anyway, yeah, that should be alright. Okay, and at this point I need to move the roller closer to the edge of the, of the table. And this way it is free to roll in a loop. I will put this uh, box here, just for safety I will put this box here, so if this disconnects, or basically the loop can disconnect and the dough will fall down, so I try to save it basically. But, now this is pretty much a free process, but I sometimes need to put a little flower here and this is also going down to the to the box so I try to be consistent and to make outside our kind of, let's let's say that I am lubricating it I will use this and this pretty much coating the dough from the both sides and the dough will never stick to this uh, roller it will stick only to the bottom roller for some reason I guess physics well and as the thing is rolling I need to adjust the pressure or the gap it's more like you're adjusting the pressure when you are ro rolling the final width you the width is or the gap is zero millimeters practically so it's the pressure so I guess this could be automated because my ball hands are free now, so I can do whatever. 
but it's not like uh, this can go wrong very quickly basically so and also it doesn't take too much time to roll the dot with final length and thickness basically now currently I am limited by the height of the tool from the from the floor like this is getting this is getting closer and closer to the box and that is the point where I basically stop this process when it goes to like uh, this level well a little bit a little bit lower than that but anyway you get the idea what I'm going to do is locate this seam in this doll which is right here I will take the doll like so cut it here and let it fall down and I still hold this and then cut this in half okay like so then one half I will roll up and store it for later when I get this I will make stuff like so well actually on the way around where is the end here and this I can uh, again feed into the machine Fuck. Well, this wasn't too great. Now the thing is, if you had like too much, uh, too little flour in the dough, I was able to repair this section that I screwed a little bit. But if you had too little dough in the, too little flour in the dough, this wouldn't be possible. It would just stick. And is this eggshell? Yeah, this is eggshell. Well, let me. Now it's basically the same thing. You can make a loop and you can start rolling. Now if you have too much flour in the dough, what will happen is that this will never stick and like the seam will not be good. And then the dough will break and it will fall down. And worst case it will be it will fall through the floor and it will be scrapped. But with uh, this thickness you can see that the thing travels on these ro rollers quite a lot and you need to exert quite a lot of pressure at this stage. So this is less uh, hands-free process than previous basically however the thing with adjusting pressure these seams are these seams in the dough are quite unreliable and this will start to crack and the whole thing will basically start to crack so it is not great idea to just prolong this stage of forming the dough but anyway now the thing is almost at the edge of this uh, of this box, which is time to stop this. I will try, try to stop this at the seam again, which is not that important, I just do it that way. Again, in the same fashion I will cut this, well, fuck. I usually cut this on this board, but you are standing there, so I cannot really. And now, I will fold this in a, in a different way, like so. And this is because if you if you look at this board it's very very badly visible because there is a mark, a line. And so what I will do is I will move this door to the edge of this, you know what? Let's stand there. Okay. 
So I will align the end of the door and I will cut according to this line. Let's move this into a separate board. And ideally, if the length of the loop was correct, this will be cut exactly to the same length, which never happens, by the way. But it's not a big deal. Okay, so now we have exactly six of these uh, sheets and one small one. And these sheets are very thin, these are basically translucent, so these are about uh, 0 0.8 millimeters. You can make it thinner, but it requires a little bit tweaks to the process. Right, I don't have much time, but I need to dry these sheets a little bit, basically, so I, I use... Uh, like this, this is just a non-stick uh, paper for baking and the reason why I need six of these sheets is because I have three of these uh, trays so I can fit two of these sheets to one tray usually there's some gap where I sneak this piece so well, now I cannot fit this anywhere, so oh fuck. Well, the problem is solved. It fell down to the ground. Anyway. Well, I, ow, kurwa, ow, pali, pali, pali. Okay, so I load these trays. And bake with airflow for about, well, last time I did seven, and this still stick to itself, so you know what, let's make it 7 and this will force the water out of this and this will be more stiff but like not such stiff that you can crack them and that step is important for this machine which is machine for cutting the pasta and this is a simple machine just two rollers basically just two rollers and this will cut the pasta basically into, into something resembling this which is like end product. I just don't have much of it. I started with a cutter that was this wide, but I quickly realized that, well, actually, this is taking me forever. The cutting of these uh, things took me like 45 minutes or something crazy like that. It was insane. But anyway, so I was like, okay, I bought this big cutter that did not have any grooves on, this, on these rollers, so I had to manually make them, not, not on late, I had to manually make them with a knife and I use a lot of like, a lot of blades, basically I, I have uh, like some thing that I wrote on this, on this thing and this is uh, mild steel uh, plated with copper and then with nickel which is not too great basically so, mm. well so basically I knurled, knurled this manually which is, it was awful job but I was able to make it work and yeah that's important yeah and uh, there is this ugly unclean uh, wiper motor which is again connected to 5 volt power supply which is just barely about to uh, provide enough power to uh, drive this thing so this is again driven with switch and now it cannot provide power anymore and uh, anyway once this heats up a little bit, it, it is fine. But the thing that uh, probably you like saw, so, which is like, what the fuck is this thing? Well, so I, this thing, I was able to cut past in like like ten minutes or something like that, which is okay. It's just great improvement for, for from forty five minutes. But I would like to spend zero minutes on this process, basically. So I made a like 2D manipulator which handles this whole process for me. We will uh, show you once I have passed already. So basically the point is that when now I am uh, drying the pasta I could already start forming the other dough that I had stored for next processing. 
and I don't want to be basically when you dry the pasta you have to process it, process it basically immediately so because otherwise it will dry up too much and this will powderize the thing it, it will break basically so it is a very tightly controlled process parameter I guess as to how the pasta or how the sheets of dough is dried one thing that I'm unhappy with is this commercially available module in uh, one more way that it has these fingers that go into these grooves and that force the dough to come straight down or, or otherwise it will be pressed into these grooves and you will never be able to like get it out from there and these are mild steel I guess chrome plated or this may be bright nickel so this is not too great and you can destroy these even from factory these were pre fucked up so so my plan, plan is I found these scrapers which is uh, nice spring steel and make these out of the out of, and make these fingers out of this material because now I have a so for PCBs that can make like very nice grooves like this one so I will probably use this this steel to make this thing and I will mount it externally because to adjust these fingers you have to disassemble this whole thing and now I have it in close I have to disassemble the really whole thing which I fucking I, I'm not going to do so you can you can it is basically pain in the ass to maintain this okay now I have these sheets ready I am using this template to cut these into strips. Let me show you, I just need to align these. I will put this template like so and cut all of these at the same time. Then I pile, the, pile them up. Yeah, you can see that these are dried quite a lot and these are all already starting to disintegrate which is not too great but we'll see okay now i put this i have like uh, some marks on here where i should put them and these should be aligned as much as they possibly can be and i can start the rollers and i can start the machine uh, there is no switch i have to plug this manually it goes to a homing sequence and come on, yeah. So here it holds. Well, fuck, it already failed. But otherwise, it works. As I said, I need to like monitor this process quite closely right now because it is new addition to the process. Yeah, and you can see how these are very, very dry. This is basically scrap. Everything that is there, which is sad, but it is what it is.
Okay. So, I didn't want to talk while this machine is running because it's loud, relatively. But you can see that the process can be probably still optimized quite a bit. There is a lot of dead time when this cutter is not cutting. And uh, it's probably a good idea to show you how the show you the design of this uh, manipulator which is uh, two Acme screws or in this type is like metric trapezoidal screws but anyway uh, these are driven by stepper motors I have like some pulleys with uh, some reductions these are basically what I felt like to fit there but these are driven with o-rings just so I don't have to find uh, some specialized belts and uh, there is just a controller and maybe you may ask that like how is this uh, even possible that these suction cups are working but there is this uh, air pump for the aquariums basically and I modified it to pull a vacuum basically so this part is like free and I had to modify it quite a lot to make a vacuum because the whole plastics of the pump element itself were so broken and brittle that I had, I was thinking to make the whole thing from scratch myself but I was able to do everything basically and now it sucks so this is then going through uh, this thing and there is a T element and this is connected to both uh, just brass tubes with uh, suction cups. Now there is also this sensor for a height. There is this uh, wooden rod that is uh, basically free floating here, just has like one stop and this is fairly precise for what I need basically. So this is all controlled by one Arduino and and this board is not very greatly done, so <laughs> the stepper drivers are on the other side because, well, I rooted it incorrectly, but anyway. Now, this air pump is controlled by a relay, which is connected to a mains, and this is working well enough. I have a stronger pump for vacuum than this, and I found that I had to drill holes to this and I just pulled the hose so I expose one hole and that way when I when I turn off the vacuum uh, it will basically drop the thing immediately. Now last thing I guess are these suction cups and I needed exceptionally thin cups that would like be able to deform to quite extreme degree and I was like okay I don't know where I will get this like so I made a form and cast this myself but these are extremely fine on the edges and this way it can um, form vacuum on relatively rough surfaces now the form is relatively simple there are just uh, two parts like this these have uh, conical surfaces of the varying degree basically and you just put this together like so and pour silicone into this cavity and these are machines to like uh, fairly fairly free fit in this there is no interference fit or whatever but this seal quite nicely so you can basically open this and pull out the silicone what what is which is molded here and you need like uh, I don't know like two milliliters of silicone to like form these. These are very 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 cheap to make. Not sure if there is anything else to like talk about really here. These are just normal steppers again. Uh, I guess maybe the, the way how this is all fit together you can see that this is not precise uh, at all. This can be wobble basically a lot the stepper here is allowed to lose steps on this block of wood so if, if it goes this way basically it all it all it always loses like two or three steps so that 
is basically that ensures that it always gets to the same position and it doesn't need any sensors to like measure where it is any homing sensor basically the on the top arm I guess I never had any problems so maybe it loses steps maybe it doesn't uh, I wouldn't think so because here the reduction is like basically one to one here it is like three or two to one yeah I guess two to one come on focus you fuck yeah so this is and this is going quite fast basically because I need I need to go fast otherwise I will be wasting time even more so we can make I guess improvement that the dough will be dough sheets will be on the edge basically and this will have to go only like few centimeters instead of they being here and have to travel all this way so then this thing will have to like go completely up home here basically and then go back or maybe it can it can home on the door why not right like well it can't it has to know the height of this thing because it's a little bit elevated and even this can be improved like I should make this thing like I should make the edge here where it is but I shouldn't have like I should it shouldn't have been so high and this should be like continuous piece of material so the things cannot get stuck at these edges basically and that's yeah that should be improved anyway there is still there is still one more step that I have to do after this drying of this dough because right now it's still very wet and oh my god and almost cramp and also crumbly so I have to put it on paper like this and Yeah, the quality of this one is fucking awful. Yeah. So I put it on sheets like this, basically, and let it dry overnight. And yeah, this will be good. One thing that I would I would like to have is to make some form of uh, third axis with some tray that will allow these to be like stuck on top of each other but not too much basically that way I could I could store a lot more of this uh, final product because it's not chaotically ordered it's basically Yeah, so I can basically stack more of it and store more of it and I would like to make such a feature and maybe, I, I don't know, I'm not sure how I will do it, but um, put it here so we can fit like four of these and next day when this is dry I will uh, move this here into this container and then it's, re it's ready for consumption basically Good question is how much of how much pasta is this? I mean, this is pretty much one portion, so it's not very it's not very much. But on the other hand, with uh, normally this process that I filmed takes me 15 minutes, so I can make four portions in one hour, and this is with reduced cost basically. So it is on the level that I am competitive with the pasta that I usually buy which is fucking expensive as well because I guess it's good <laughs> anyway so this takes some time but uh, I think it's worth it I guess it's a lot of fun to develop such machines I guess <laughs> anyway so that's all I got for you I guess and uh, yeah We'll see you next time.